Learn English from the Bible. Genesis 37 Joseph the Dreamer Jacob lived in the land of Canaan, where his father had lived. This is the family history of Jacob. Joseph was a young man, 17 years old. He and his brothers cared for the flocks. His brothers were the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives. Joseph gave his father bad reports about his brothers. Joseph was born when his father Israel, also called Jacob, was old. So Israel loved Joseph more than his other sons. He made Joseph a special robe with long sleeves. Joseph's brothers saw that their father loved Joseph more than he loved them. So they hated their brother and could not speak to him politely. One time Joseph had a dream. When he told his brothers about it, they hated him even more. Joseph said, Listen to the dream I had. We were in the field tying bundles of wheat together. My bundle stood up, and your bundles of wheat gathered around mine. Your bundles bowed down to mine. His brother said, Do you really think you will be king over us? Do you truly think you will rule over us? His brothers hated him even more now. They hated him because of his dreams and what he had said. Then Joseph had another dream. He told his brothers about it also. He said, Listen, I had another dream. I saw the sun, moon and eleven stars bowing down to me. Joseph also told his father about this dream. But his father scolded him, saying, What kind of dream is this? Do you really believe that your mother, your brothers and I will bow down to you? Joseph's brothers were jealous of him. But his father thought about what all these things could mean. One day Joseph's brothers went to Shechem to herd their father's sheep. Jacob said to Joseph, Go to Shechem. Your brothers are there herding the sheep. Joseph answered, I will go. His father said, Go and see if your brothers and the sheep are all right. Then come back and tell me. So Joseph's father sent him from the valley of Hebron. When Joseph came to Shechem, a man found him wandering in the field. He asked Joseph, What are you looking for? Joseph answered, I am looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are herding the sheep? The man said, They have already gone. I heard them say they were going to Dothan. So Joseph went to look for his brothers and found them in Dothan. Joseph sold into slavery. Joseph's brothers saw him coming from far away. Before he reached them, they made a plan to kill him. They said to each other, Here comes that dreamer. 
Let's kill him and throw his body into one of the wells. We can tell our father that a wild animal killed him. Then we will see what will become of his dreams. But Reuben heard their plan and saved Joseph. He said, let's not kill him. Don't spill any blood. Throw him into this well here in the desert. But don't hurt him. Reuben planned to save Joseph later and send him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they pulled off his robe with long sleeves. Then they threw him into the well. It was empty. There was no water in it. While Joseph was in the well, the brothers sat down to eat. When they looked up, they saw a group of Ishmaelites. They were traveling from Gilead to Egypt. Their camels were carrying spices, balm and myrrh. Then Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain if we kill our brother and hide his death? Let's sell him to these Ishmaelites. Then we will not be guilty of killing our own brother. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. And the other brothers agreed. So when the Midianite traders came by, the brothers took Joseph out of the well. They sold him to the Ishmaelites for eight ounces of silver. And the Ishmaelites took him to Egypt. Reuben was not with his brothers when they sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites. When Reuben came back to the well, Joseph was not there. Reuben tore his clothes to show he was sad. Then he went back to his brothers and said, The boy is not there. What will I do? The brothers killed a goat and dipped Joseph's long-sleeved robe in its blood. Then they brought the robe to their father. They said, We found this robe. Look it over carefully. See if it is your son's robe. Jacob looked it over and said, It is my son's robe. Some savage animal has eaten him. My son Joseph has been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes and put on rough cloth to show that he was sad. He continued to be sad about his son for a long time. All of Jacob's sons and daughters tried to comfort him. But he could not be comforted. Jacob said, I will be sad about my son until the day I die. So Jacob cried for his son Joseph. Meanwhile the Midianites who had bought Joseph had taken him to Egypt. There they sold him to Potiphar. Potiphar was an officer to the king of Egypt and captain of the palace guard. Genesis 38 Judah and Tamar About that time, Judah left his brothers. He went to stay with a man named Hira. Hira was from the town of Adullam. Judah met a Canaanite girl there and married her. Her father was named Shua. And Judah had intimate relations with her. 
she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Judah named him Er. Later she gave birth to another son. She named him Onan. Later she had another son. She named him Shelah. She was at Kazib when this third son was born. Judah chose a girl named Tamar to be the wife of his first son Er. Er was Judah's oldest son. But he did what the Lord said was evil. So the Lord killed him. Then Judah said to Er's brother Onan, Go and have physical relations with your dead brother's wife. It is your duty to provide children for your brother in this way. But Onan knew that the children would not belong to him. Onan was supposed to have physical relations with Tamar. But he did not complete the physical act. This made it impossible for Tamar to become pregnant. So Er could not have descendants. The Lord was displeased by this wicked thing Onan had done. So the Lord killed Onan also. Then Judah said to his daughter-in-law Tamar, Go back to live in your father's house. And don't marry until my young son Shelah grows up. Judah was afraid that Shelah also would die like his brothers. So Tamar returned to her father's home. After a long time Judah's wife, the daughter of Shua, died. After Judah had gotten over his sorrow, he went to Timnah. He went to his men who were cutting the wool from his sheep. His friend Hira from Adullam went with him. Tamar learned that Judah, her father-in-law, was going to Timnah to cut the wool from his sheep. So she took off the clothes that showed she was a widow. Then she covered her face with a veil to hide who she was. She sat down by the gate of Anam. It was on the road to Timnah. She did this because Judah's younger son Shelah had grown up. But Judah had not made plans for her to marry him. When Judah saw her, he thought she was a prostitute. This was because she had covered her face with a veil. So Judah went to her and said, Let me have physical relations with you. He did not know that she was Tamar, his daughter-in-law. She asked, What will you give me if I let you have physical relations with me? Judah answered, I will send you a young goat from my flock. She answered, First give me something to keep as a deposit until you send the goat. Judah asked, What do you want me to give you as a deposit? Tamar answered, Give me your seal and its cord, and give me your walking stick. So Judah gave these things to her. Then Judah and Tamar had physical relations, and Tamar became pregnant. Tamar went home. She took off the veil that covered her face. And she put on the clothes that showed she was a widow. Judah sent his friend Hira with the young goat. Judah told Hira to find the woman and get back his seal and the walking stick he had given her. But Hira could not find her. 
Hira asked some of the men at the town of Inane, where is the prostitute who was here by the road? The men answered, there has never been a prostitute here. So he went back to Judah and said, I could not find the woman. The men who lived there said, there has never been a prostitute here. Judah said, let her keep the things. I don't want people to laugh at us. I sent her the goat as I promised. But you could not find her. About three months later someone told Judah, Tamar, your daughter-in-law, is guilty of acting like a prostitute. Now she is pregnant. Then Judah said, bring her out and let her be burned to death. When the men went to bring Tamar out, she sent a message to her father-in-law. She said, the man who owns these things has made me pregnant. Look at this seal and its cord and this walking stick. Tell me whose they are. Judah recognized them. He said, she is more in the right than I. She did this because I did not give her to my son Shelah as I promised. And Judah did not have physical relations with her again. When time came for Tamar to give birth, there were twins in her body. While she was giving birth, one baby put his hand out. The nurse tied a red string on his hand. She said, this baby came out first. But he pulled his hand back in. So the other baby was born first. The nurse said, so you are able to break out first. And they named him Perez. Thirty after this, the baby with the red string on his hand was born. They named him Zira. Genesis 39 Joseph is sold to Potiphar. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. An Egyptian named Potiphar was an officer to the king of Egypt. He was the captain of the palace guard. He bought Joseph from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man. He lived in the house of his master, Potiphar the Egyptian. Potiphar saw that the Lord was with Joseph. He saw that the Lord made Joseph successful in everything he did. So Potiphar was very happy with Joseph. He allowed Joseph to be his personal servant. He put Joseph in charge of the house. Joseph was trusted with everything Potiphar owned. So Joseph was put in charge of the house. He was put in charge of everything Potiphar owned. Then the Lord blessed the people in Potiphar's house because of Joseph. And the Lord blessed everything that belonged to Potiphar, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar put Joseph in charge of everything he owned. Potiphar was not concerned about anything, except the food he ate. Joseph is put into prison. Now Joseph was well built and handsome. After some time the wife of Joseph's master began to desire Joseph. One day she said to him, 
have physical relations with me. But Joseph refused. He said to her, My master trusts me with everything in his house. He has put me in charge of everything he owns. There is no one in his house greater than I. He has not kept anything from me except you. And that is because you are his wife. How can I do such an evil thing? It is a sin against God. The woman talked to Joseph every day, but he refused to have physical relations with her or even spend time with her. One day Joseph went into the house to do his work as usual. He was the only man in the house at that time. His master's wife grabbed his coat. She said to him, Come and have physical relations with me. But Joseph left his coat in her hand and ran out of the house. She saw what Joseph had done. He had left his coat in her hands and had run outside. So she called to the servants in her house. She said, Look, this Hebrew slave was brought here to shame us. He came in and tried to have physical relations with me. But I screamed. My scream scared him, and he ran away. But he left his coat with me. She kept his coat until her husband came home. And she told her husband the same story. She said, This Hebrew slave you brought here came in to shame me. When he came near me, I screamed. He ran away, but he left his coat. When Joseph's master heard what his wife said Joseph had done, he became very angry. So Potiphar arrested Joseph and put him into prison. This prison was where the king's prisoners were put. And Joseph stayed there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him kindness. The Lord caused the prison warden to like Joseph. The prison warden chose Joseph to take care of all the prisoners. He was responsible for whatever was done in the prison. The warden paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's care. This was because the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord made Joseph successful in everything he did. Genesis 40 Joseph interprets two dreams. After these things happened, two of the king's officers displeased the king. These officers were the man who served wine to the king and the king's baker. The king became angry with his officer who served him wine and his baker. So he put them in the prison of the captain of the guard. This was the same prison where Joseph was kept. The captain of the guard put the two prisoners in Joseph's care. They stayed in prison for some time. One night both the king's officer who served in wine and the baker had a dream. Each had his own dream with its own meaning. 
When Joseph came to them the next morning, he saw they were worried. Joseph asked the king's officers who were with him, Why do you look so unhappy today? The two men answered, We both had dreams last night. But no one can explain the meaning of them to us. Joseph said to them, God is the only one who can explain the meaning of dreams. So tell me your dreams. So the man who served wine to the king told Joseph his dream. He said, I dreamed I saw a vine. On the vine there were three branches. I watched the branches bud and blossom, and then the grapes ripened. I was holding the king's cup. So I took the grapes and squeezed the juice into the cup. Then I gave it to the king. Then Joseph said, I will explain the dream to you. The three branches stand for three days. Before the end of three days the king will free you. He will allow you to return to your work. You will serve the king as wine just as you did before. But when you are free, remember me. Be kind to me. Tell the king about me so that I can get out of this prison. I was taken by force from the land of the Hebrews. And I have done nothing here to deserve being put in prison. The baker saw that Joseph's explanation of the dream was good. So he said to Joseph, I also had a dream. I dreamed there were three bread baskets on my head. In the top basket there were all kinds of baked food for the king. But the birds were eating this food out of the basket on my head. Joseph answered, I will tell you what the dream means. The three baskets stand for three days. Before the end of three days, the king will cut off your head. He will hang your body on a pole. And the birds will eat your flesh. Three days later it was the king's birthday. So he gave a feast for all his officers. In front of his officers, he let the chief officer who served his wine and the chief baker out of prison. The king gave his chief officer who served wine his old position. Once again he put the king's cup of wine into the king's hand. But the king hanged the baker on a pole. Everything happened just as Joseph had said it would. But the officer who served wine did not remember Joseph. He forgot all about him.